Monty and the Pharaoh. The Monty and Pharaoh Show. And you're watching the Monty and Pharaoh Show. Monty and the Pharaoh. With Monty and the Pharaoh. Monty and the Pharaoh. It's Monty and the Pharaoh. With Monty and the Pharaoh. Monty and the Pharaoh. Monty and the Pharaoh. Monty and the Pharaoh. Monty and Pharaoh. It's Monty and the Pharaoh. And Monty and the Pharaoh. Oh, is it Monty and the Pharaoh? Yeah. Monty and Pharaoh. Da the Monty and the Pharaoh show. Monty and the Pharaoh. To the Monty and the Pharaoh show. And it's Monty and the Pharaoh, baby. Monty and the Pharaoh. With Monty and the Pharaoh. Monty and the Pharaoh. Oh, what a run. Monty and the Pharaoh. Monty and the Pharaoh. Hey, cut the fucking music. When you want the best in professional wrestling, Long Island, there's only one place you're going to get it. Right here, Monty and the Pharaoh. <laughs> now, that's not just the coolest, and that's not just the best. That, my friends, is just <laughs> incredible. <laughs> Monty and the Pharaoh. You've got the future Hall of Famer, that rocker, Marty Gennetti, MJ in the house, and I'm sitting here with two more future Hall of Famers, Monty and the Pharaoh. We're doing that stuff and we're going to rock it. Star Studios in Huntington, New York, and at the board is the super producer, <laughs> Mr. Stephen Miller. Stephen, how are you? Hello, Monty and the Pharaoh. And to the right is the star of the show, Mr. Jimmy Farrow. Jimmy, how are you? Good evening. What's going on? What's going on? Yeah, what's going on? Nothing ah, what, wait, 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 what's with the look? Oh, that's right. This yeah. is the Hannibal. Got the what? Oh, by the way, if anyone hey. uh, has been watching Hannibal lately, remember what? Hannibal guys with Billy Jack Haynes? Remember that whole spiel that was going on? Remember you? Were yeah, yeah. Jack yes, Haynes. I was here. Yeah. Yeah. So he hated Hannibal, and they, you know, they had that whole thing. So I what? Guess they were seen at Taco Bell. <laughs> well, Hannibal's on there, and he's it to people. Oh well. It was a work. Oh, we didn't know that. Oh my God! Why? Really? That's what? A shock. Wait a minute! What? Uh, yes, it was a work. <sighs> I'm so. I feel so. Duped. Worked again. But here's the funny right. thing. I gotta tell you. I guess. Uh, who's, the guy, <laughs> who's the guy that does those videos? What? Like, what? He, was, he was making all that money doing videos way back in the nineties. Oh yeah, I, I yeah, go on. But anyway, the, so I guess they made a video of this, and they oh. got that guy. Who's that? Is this guy that's like he's like kind of huh. manscaped. Manscaped? I forget his name, but anyway, he was interviewing Manscaped. Them, and Hannibal was like kind of complaining that he didn't ask anything about Hannibal's career, and then I guess they had a shtick where they were actually going to fight, and the kid goes running off, and they showed a clip of that, and mm. I'm like... Mm. Gripping, huh, Steve? Yeah, thrilling. Yeah, and we thrilling, wonder why yeah. professional yeah. wrestling is in the way of this. Ay, ay, ay. Anyway, I'm not throwing shots at anybody, right? No, no. not at all. What are you all talking right. about? You're just uh, observing. Observing. You're observing. Yeah, I'm observing. Right. Like there's something wrong with observing. Apparently there is. There might right. be. Right. There oh, might be. be negative. Yes. No. Oh, well. So, guys, I just want to talk about something. We, oh, we've sorry. got a anyway. special guest here, which a Farrell will announce. Yes, but, yes, uh, yes. Coming live from Skype. Yeah. Um, Ooh, fancy. But we hope. I, <laughs> all right, we I was thinking about hope. a few things. <laughs> You were thinking? Am I, am I too we. old school or out of touch? What? So I want to run a couple things by you. Hey, go on. There's a pretty attractive girl that I had seen, whatever, I'd seen her. Live. Uh, yeah. I think, yeah, she's good looking. Where is this girl? I wasn't married. I, 
Uh, okay, I'd go on. Boots, would you right? uh, knock boots? I would knock boots. Where the hell did you pick that one up from? 1987. 1987. Are you cold. serious? <laughs> That was so wow! Mint. That, that, that material was rad, is that man. That material is that fresh. Wow, you're on fire. Go on. <laughs> what else you got? But anyway, I ran across right. on Facebook. Yeah. Hello. And there's some did she button. block you? No, no, no. Oh wow, this you're is going well so yet. far. Oh, hear me out on this. Uh, yes, I special will. Special guests will weigh in when we get it. Oh, okay. Uh, but fair enough. I'm, I'm looking at the photos. Okay. And there's a couple with her arms raised. <laughs> What's going and on she's here? She's got um, hair on her arms. Oh no! <laughs> Thank you. Oh. I instantly said, I'm done. Holy I'm lawnmower, I'm Batman. Really? Are we out of touch? Like, no, you're not. No. To say that? Don't, don't, don't you remember the story I told you? Wait a minute. Don't you remember that story I told you this summer when I was doing the uh, security gig for the Grateful Dead thing? There was this girl twirling around, and she had the attention of half the crowd and the entire security staff, and then she threw her arms up in the air during Sugar Magnolia, and it was just like, whoa, go, dear, get the lawn boy. What are the whole... Half the, the crowd went to get... Boy. Half the crowd went to get... <laughs> Coffee. It was awful. What a letdown. Well, you know, anyway, you know, we talk. We both what? love uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Okay. The girl, the girl, put her, put her arms, arms up. up. She's got hair. I'm like, I'm out, dude. I'm on Brad Pitt. You I'm all about. Wait it a up. minute. Was this one of Manson's chicks or something? Yeah. 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 Nasty, How did I know? Nasty, nasty. Excellent. They were nasty. Charlie anyway. rules. So here's on. another thing that hit me. <laughs> so I told you guys last week, right? I never watched King of Queens or Two and a Half Men, but what? on TV Land, I'd be watching a lot of the the reruns. Yes. Yeah. The two shows so awesome. are just awesome. Yeah, they are. So there's one where King of Queens, uh, what's his name on the show? Do you know? Right? I Kevin James. No, but his name on the show. That Kevin. Kevin. Dude, it's go on. Kevin. But it's a good try. <laughs> mail, long mail story dude. short. James Kevin. Uh, long story <laughs> short, they go on strike, so Kevin James is out of work. Yeah. And all of a sudden, he's miserable because he's not bringing home a paycheck for his I wife. I think I remember seeing this one. And go I'm on. I'm thinking to myself, that would be me. Is that old school? Does <laughs> That's man funny. still have to come Oh, absolutely. So does a man feel demasculated? Emasculated by not bringing home a paycheck. I would. Farrell? Wow, look at you out of nowhere. We're having a ball and you go into the deep end of the pool. You prick. Um, what does that do with you or anybody else? I'm thinking about myself. <laughs> what makes you think of me? Uh, oh, no, you, you're, you're, you're so hilarious. No. Right. Well, you know, uh, you know. Uh, sorry, I have loose tongue. Um... Yeah, of course it makes somebody feel lesser. I think I don't think it matters what's between your legs if you're out of work. <laughs> you want work. People want to people want to be busy. What's it got to do with I gender? I identify myself by my work, man. Really? I don't identify myself. I'm not artistic. You I'm know not that, a writer. That is... By the way, let's give a shout out to your book, please. Yes. Oh, good please. loving. My Life is a Rascal by Gene Cornish and me. Which Sweet. is killing it. It's doing it really well. It. Um we got a lot of cool promotion. Cousin Brucey was promoting it on his serious show, and Flash Phelps mm-hmm. on 60s oh, on 6 in the morning was uh, promoting it. So, awesome. real nice. Cool, and, and they're gentlemen, because they didn't charge us. They just oh. wanted to do it. So. Well, I read I read the book front to back. It's a long I, book. And I enjoyed it. It's, it's long, but I enjoyed it. Thank you. I enjoyed it very much, and that's no BS. <laughs> With the ESS. How did I know? Um, but it's good. I feel like Monty Nefaro could be lucky to some people because, right? Aqua Cherry's killing it. Okay. Wisteria Hall. Uh, your partner, Bart Griggs, is saying you guys are starting to sell some EPs going on the internet. And now we've mm. got our own Stephen Miller making books. I yep. feel like M&P is uh, the way to go. You're so, not lucky. It has nothing to do with luck. You create your own luck, dude. You're right. here. You're working at it. You right. put the, the hours in. That's right. the difference, bro. Yep. That's it. Bob McCarthy's weighing in. He said the star of the show, Jimmy Farrell. What? Oh, hey, thanks, Bob. Anyway, he, he's Monty, pretty good too, you know. Oi. No, I'm just. Would you? I'm just. Don't you? I'm just eye candy. Don't baby. you? <laughs> wait a minute. If he's the eye candy, what the hell am I? You're the star. The of chewing the show. gum on the floor. You're What's the star the? of the show? Oh boy, I feel so impotent. You're the. Vanna I mean, important. White. I'm the fan of white. What? I'm, I'm You're fan of white. white? Oh my well, god. Well, Bob's listening to your voice. He's touching himself. He's no. Watching me. Isn't that true, Bob? Boy, I bet you're glad you typed in, huh, Bob? Oh, God. This is just wrong. What else do you have? I have a choice between you... interviewing Road Warrior and I'm touching myself to Monty. I'll Ru- touch myself to Monty. Oh, what, what a, a rush. Hawk? rush. Hawk? Would you... What a Why do you... Hush. What a gush. Um, <laughs> anyway. Napkin. <laughs> Would you come on? Right, we got to get to our guests. Yeah, please. Monty and the Farrell can be seen every Thursday from 8.05 to 9 p.m. from Rockstar Studios. Also, catch us on YouTube, Facebook, Spotify... Yeah. 
Mm. Breaker. Yeah. Bear with me here. Yeah, keep going, keep going. You know what? what else? I have a touchpad. Hey, how about yeah. that? Did you mention Google Podcast, Overcast, Pocket Cast, and Radio Public. He mentioned it. And you know, Miller, I want to give thank you again. I try to tell these other people out in podcast land, we are not a podcast. You're a broadcast. We are a broadcast. Well, we are. We are a television show. That's right. So if you're a podcast, right. guess what? We're way above you. Oh, here we Stop go. I mentioned, I mentioned that on our. I mentioned that on our show. Ta-da. Yeah, 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 here we go. Podcast. Podcast. Would you broadcast? <laughs> <We're> broadcast. <laughs> Why are we broadcast? We also can be seen on channel one fifteen from eight thirty to nine p.m. every Tuesday. Yeah. On channel one fifteen from six a.m. to six thirty on Saturday. Yeah. And again, I keep saying this. Coming soon, channel twenty. I'm trying to get the the time. Okay. The reason is I just fair enough. Haven't got it. Fair enough. <laughs> and uh, Ooh, facts is facts. Week three. On the Fox affiliate RTF Sports Network. Nice. Did you catch any of our shows yet? No, not yet. You always call me to wake up, and I'm like, you know, come on, bro. I would just finished writing the interview. Leave me alone. So we're, we're all over the place. <laughs> Boy, I'm coming uh, for that one. Again, uh, I want to uh, quickly. Is there enough time in a day to even watch all these things with Monty and the Fowl? You can watch it all day long. Wow. Apparently you can. And, and by the way, we're on right. iHeartRadio. That's. Yeah, yes. Buddy. Yes. Uh, which just started a couple of weeks ago. Uh, what is this about Chad White rules, but Courtney is awesome? What's All right, that? Well, hold on. Oh, okay, I want to thank I want to thank the fans <laughs> out there to support us. I really do mean that. Yes. And I want to give a special yes. shout out to two specific fans. Right. This better be. Their, this I'm better. I'm not going to say their full names, okay? This, because it wouldn't be right. What? But you, they know who. The, if I say their name, they'll know who this is. Well, so, Joey M. Out there. Much respect, my friend. You yes. Have nothing but support. Yes. Yeah, super cool. And I want to tell you, Monty and Afaro are saying this right now. Any event that we have in this studio, feel free to come down, meet the wrestler, free of charge, oh, yeah. get autographs, get pictures. Absolutely, so for him. a big event, which we'll announce in a little bit. You can come there, come to our table. Yeah. It's free of charge to you, sir. You yeah. Support he us from day one, he, and we want to throw that out Right, there. truly nice person. Ollie G, another guy out there that's... Oh, he's hey, that's that's stuff. the YouTube dude. That is the YouTube. Yes, dude. I bet you he thinks I'm not aware of him. I'm aware of him. He yeah, rules. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So, Ali, I want to say, brother, same offer goes to you, my yeah. friend. By all means, you come down to the studio, get autographs, and get pictures. Come to the big event, and I will tell you also, both of you gentlemen, you also have the chance to meet our own Stephen Miller. Hey, hey, that's hey. best selling <laughs> author. So anyway, on all serious note, we, we josh a lot, but I want to thank yeah, everybody definitely. for all you do for us. Without you, you know, like I said, we make one person smile. That's all that really matters, right? Yep. Okay. Uh, I want to thank Aqua Cherry, uh, the band that plays our theme, theme song for MMP, Straight to the Top. You catch Aqua Cherry touring in a city near you. Go to www.aquacherryband.com. Uh, you can also get their music on Spotify, Reverb Nation, or where music is sold. Lead singer Chad White is awesome, and the other <laughs> yeah, singer... what is going Corey on here? It's really awesome. She's really awesome. She's pretty, too. Let me guess, she's why, pretty, let me she's guess why you think she's really awesome. Because she, she has midriff. She what? She's always got Really? That is, that, yeah, I am with Monty. But it gets I cold on Long Island at those matter. bars. What? It doesn't matter, bro. Interesting. Hello. You, you should <laughs> drift on Monty and Afaro where it's Wow. Fan. Thank God I don't have any half shirts. Anyway, go on. <laughs> Could you imagine doing a half shirt? <laughs> Hello. Like, what are you talking about? Back in the day, we used to <laughs> wear that. You remember that? Do you remember that? Oi. God, were we lame. I ain't wearing that shirt. No. Wow. You know what? Best you booger. What? Bastion Bugger. Bugger. You're saying, and you're saying that to me? You just ruined yourself. That's terrible. All right, we got a couple well, events coming up. It's going to be a couple. We don't have a couple. Through, so uh, on a, February 29th, boatload. the Warlord February 29th. will be in the studio. That's two Saturdays from now. The yeah. Warlord will not be here. What? Down down Unfortunately. Down okay. Okay. All right. Uh, but I'll have the Warlord give you a shout out. Okay. Um, Where's Barbarian? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I, Hi, I, Barbarian. Hey, Barbarian. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. Hello, oh, Barbarian. I had to. <laughs> <laughs> On March 6th, very exciting Hall of Famer Jake the Snake Roberts is mm-hmm. in the studio. Mm-hmm. Dude. Hmm. That's mm-hmm. the hook. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. fanboying for that. I gotta be. Yeah, honest. how can you uh, not? I'm a little bit of a fanboy for Jake. You know? How couldn't you be a fan? I know. Yeah. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with it either. Nope. I mean, Jake the Snake is one of the iconic wrestlers. Yes. Of the world. Hey. And again, only a Village Connection do you get Jake the Snake. From. That's right. Yeah. Right? Well, well, Monty and Afaro. Strike it. again. 
March 7th, Monty the Pharaoh will be at the big event. That's the one of the top wrestling events here in New York that come twice a month. Yes, sir. We will have at our tables none other than Mr. USA Tony Atlas. Yes, sir. And WWE superstar Sunny Beach. Uh, please come to the table. Come get an autograph, get a picture, pick up a Monty the Pharaoh t-shirt, wear the colors loud and proud. We greatly appreciate it. Hmm. Keep pushing the show. Hmm. Right after that event, we're coming back to the studio, and that's where we have Miller... It's Miller, Monty, and the Pharaoh all <laughs> oh, five day. hours. Wow. Uh, Marathon, we got the once Rocky again. Johnson tribute show with Tony Atlas and Pat Tanaka. Uh, they'll be re- you know, reviewing the life of, Tony, uh, of Rocky Johnson. Yeah. Who yeah. unfortunately passed away. Yeah. Uh, we actually were going to get them again interviewed together, and uh, it didn't work out. No. no. Uh, Still looking forward to this. Mr. Hughes will be in studio. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are you going to dress like him that day? Rumors are you guys are related. Go on. Rumor has it, we might be related. Mr. Hughes was very effective at what he did. Like, what is a big fan? Like, you know how I'm a big fan of Jericho? No, not on that level, but the guy certainly did his job quite quite well. What was his job? His job was just to look intimidating as shit. And I was and he did it, you know. Come on, he did. You know? You did it that day behind Marty when we were Oh, it was hilarious. Marty was like, Mr. Hughes. What he did <laughs> what else you got? Right after that, we got the Killer Bees and Greg Gagne in studio. Yeah. Dude, I yeah. am so yeah. Great Greg Gagne. Yeah, me too. Me too. This is pretty damn awesome. I mean, it's not Jake the Snake, but man, isn't it in the same... Close. Like historically, like you know what he yes. what he means, what his dad meant, what that whole company AWA meant. Oh, is, he, he dude, this is a heavyweight here. You he know, meant a this lot. is the, yeah, he did. He did mean a lot. Yep. And then on April sixteenth, on Thursday, we've got the Hall of Fame former. NWA, oh my God! Thirteen time NWA champion. This, so uh, this is Express. just another name. That's, where a, that's off the hook. And still out there and doing their thing. This is crazy. And what a lineup. just announced, I guess, uh, what's that wrestling organization that's... Uh, Titan? That Titan. And yeah, you. okay. Titan. Miller, you're going to be jacked about this. Team Splendid, at some point, is wrestling the Rock They're wrestling and Roll the Express. Rock and Roll Express, bro. Really? Yeah. yeah. Is Look at show, you is, tripping is show, over the, the, the chair. Is there the chauffeur going to be there? The chauffeur's going to be there. Uh, here we go. The stipulation is first one to break a hip loses the money. <laughs> this is not right. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you force me to chuckle? What the frick, dude? <laughs> oh, oh, my uh, God! <sighs> well, anyway. Uh, <laughs> you. Anyway, there's... Uh, uh, you. What was you going to say? I don't know. What were you going to say? Two what comes after that? Famous. Anyway, before we go to yes. commercial break, uh, talking about the WWE. So far, the WWE has announced two inductions for the class of 2020, the New World Order, which is Hulk Hogan, Kevin Nash, Scott Hall, and hey, Sean yo. Waltman, and Batista. But in re- recent weeks, we discussed this last week, the yeah. Bellas and Juice Justin Thunder Liga. Interesting. This has been added. Interesting. The rumor has it that the British Bulldog and... J- JBL are going to be mm-hmm. put into the Hall of Fame. All good. I'm, I'm all good anyway, with all of this. Speaking of Hall of Fame, we have a special guest that we're going to catch up with right after this commercial break, Mr. Nikita Brezhnikov. Nikita Brezhnikov is an actor known for Brush with Danger, The Wrestler, Heroes of Wrestling. Uh, Nikita, you on the line? I'm here, brother. Man, thanks for joining us, man. It's our honor to have you on Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to come aboard. Happy to be on the broadcast. I there had to go, be here. Brother. <laughs> thanks, All right, brother. I'm going to turn you over to the foul, my friend. You get to talk to the Do star it. on the show. Oh, would you please? Nikita, thanks for coming on, man. I want to like basically start at the beginning. Uh, tell us when you became a fan of pro wrestling way back. 1970 was the first year. I was about 12 years old at the time. Heard the kids in school talking about this thing called wrestling. Had to check it out. And when I did, I saw Professor Tanaka. He was tearing up a jobber on the championship wrestling show. One hour! That's all we had back then. That's all we needed was one hour of TV. Everything else was done in the arenas. That's what drew us. I was hooked from day one, 
and then it just grew from there. You, you've been on record, I, I was checking out some of your past interviews, you've been on record as saying that your favorite time period in sports was the 70s. Can you, can you explain to the audience what made that time period so special to you? The way I describe the 70s, it was rogue, yet it was, it was more legitimate. Not just wrestling, but baseball was great. When you had the Oakland dynasty in the 70s, mm. I was a Baltimore kid, so hey, I love Long Island. Everything in New York is great. The Orioles were a fantastic ball club, yep. so you know we were going crazy with that. Then yep. Cincinnati took over New York Yankees. With football, the Baltimore Colts, I mean, man, that was just fantastic. Myself, I really loved the Washington Redskins, the Over the Hill Gang. Boxing was big. Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier, the world stopped, man. I mean, do you hear about boxing anymore, seriously? It's no. like... Not on that level. You know, we were just talking not, about that last week. It's like a dead sport. Even though they're trying right. to push uh, Wilder. Wilder and Fury. Yeah, and Fury, which, by the way, I probably didn't know their names two and a half weeks ago. <laughs> Would you please? It's true. Yeah, really? Right. Not I'm being well, honest. Not Fury? Well, he was just in wrestling. Yeah, and that's how much I paid attention that's to That's true, too. So. That was kind of lame. I, I, I agree. Do you watch <laughs> wrestling today, Nikita? Do you still watch wrestling today? Not that much. Okay. I'm going to go to a live show this weekend with a friend, but I, you know, look, when I came from what I had all those years, and then when I got into the business, it's kind of like, eh, you know, I don't knock it. I respect everybody that gets out there. It's a dangerous situation, no matter what's going on. So yeah, I salute you. That's wonderful. But it's it's just hard when you watch something like Bob Backlund and Greg Valentine, mm-hmm. who. One year anniversary, or not one year, I'm sorry, it was uh, yesterday, 1979, the President's Day storm, February 19th. They went one hour. Right. And I mean, that was wrestling. How can you top something like that, you know? Right. By the way, today's the anniversary when Backlund beat Superstar Billy Graham in 1978. So there's always a lot of back and forth about, well, if Graham hadn't dropped the belt, he would have been the new Hogan. It would have been this. It would have been that. I don't deal in what ifs. It was what it was, and I'll tell you what, I loved Backlund. I really did. But Superstar was my favorite time when he had the belt, without a doubt. Yeah, and his foot was on the road, too. What a load of crap. Yeah, well, you know, that was always uh, you know, it's, it's WWF's <laughs> way. Somebody had a foot on the road or something <laughs> happened. It's you know, funny the, you bring up Backlund. Where do you rank Backlund in your eyes? One of the greatest. Now, it wasn't Bruno. Nobody was ever going to replace Bruno, without a doubt. That was a once-in-a-lifetime situation when somebody like Bruno came in. But, you know, Pedro was great. When uh, Bruno lost to Koloff, transitional champion, Koloff had it for a month, and Pedro, that was good. We liked Pedro. But you know what? We were still missing Bruno. And it started to show at the box office. So then, here you go, Stasiak beats Pedro. It was a real quick deal in Philadelphia Arena. Boom, Bruno gets the belt back. He held it for those next three and a half years and had the broken neck. That was a problem. So then it was like, okay, they gave it to Superstar. And, you know, there's a reason how Superstar got it, why it was in Baltimore. I talk about it in the book. I know we'll get to that later. Okay. But, But in Baltimore... The State Athletic Commission, once a decision is made, it's final, no matter what happens. So it was like, you know, they had that situation in New York with Bruiser Brody. He pinned Bruno with the feet on the ropes. They changed everything around. So it was like, okay, do this in Baltimore. It's legitimate. And it kills, uh, like Dominic DiNucci used to say, you kill uh, one bird with two stones. They were able to show the belt can change hands somewhere other than Madison Square Garden. And nothing can be reversed. I think it was smart to have Bruno chasing the guy that basically, they say, stole the belt from him. I thought that had more heat than uh, even Bruno was champion. You know, it was great. Bruno was champion. But, man, the buildings just vibrated like I was just talking uh, last week. On the 18th of February, the Spectrum, it was the big cage match in 78. Bruno and Superstar, the culmination of a three-month feud spread out over a long time period. They didn't run back-to-back for whatever reason that year, but it was great. They turned thousands away for that match, literally thousands, with a snowstorm approaching even. But, man, you 
You can't make that happen. You can do a lot of things with wrestling. You can make a man into a woman. You, you can make a guy come back from the dead. You can do all kinds of things, but you can't make people believe, and we believed back in the 70s, man. What was, to you, what was the allure of Bruno Sammartino? His humbleness. You know, Bruno, he was like a gorilla. He had strength that was unbelievable. And I'm talking, you know, with Nikolai, first-hand knowledge, Johnny Valiant. And they said, man, it, it, when Bruno, his strength, especially in his younger days, it was just incredible. But, you know, he never came across as, hey, I'm, I'm this, I'm that. He was a humble guy. I was on a couple of shows with Bruno over the years. He was referee, TV commentator. He came to people, everybody in that dressing room shook hands with everybody. You know, he didn't sit there in a chair and say, well, hey, you know, I'm the king, you come to me. He was a humble guy. Really? And then that always came across to us, and that spoke to us. So it was like, hey, you do something to Bruno, look out, man. We're, we're going to be waiting for you. And see, in those days, when people believed the heels will tell you, it was hell for them. And I was one of the goofy bastard kids that would throw stuff at them as they drove in and out of the arenas and maybe even in the arenas because we cared. It meant something. You hurt Bruno, the chief, somebody like that, and you got hell to pay, Jack. Right, right. Nikolai, we're going to run a quick commercial break. We'll be back in a few seconds. Hmm. All right, Nikita, I wanted to ask you, since we're on the uh, 70s and the Bruno San Martino uh, championship run, obviously one of Bruno's great all-time opponents was uh, Nikolai Volkov. Uh, for those at home who are not familiar with your background, you spent 11 years, I do believe, if I'm not mistaken, working with Nikolai Volkov. Can you tell us how that all started for you? Yeah, I got lucky. I always call myself the luckiest son of a bitch on the planet nice. because people will say to me, gee, you must be living a dream. It's like, are you crazy? I never thought I could be involved with wrestling. But I was a policeman at the time for Baltimore City. So I see an advertisement in the 7-Eleven. It was a local show. So it's like, oh, Nikolai Volkov's going to be there. Now, I was an avid tape collector. and I'm saying tapes, VHS tapes. We're going back to the 90s now. So it's like I was trying to elaborate on the collection. So I thought, well, maybe Nikolai has something. So it was an afternoon show. I was working. It was at a boys club. I go to the show. I'm in uniform. So Nikolai comes walking in. He said, hello, Sergeant. Never met each other before, but he sees the uniform. So then, as would be before the show, Nikolai comes out to sell his pictures. So I go over, introduce myself. We start talking. So I say, hey, Nikolai, you got any matches? He's like, no, but I would love to have them. I pay you. I'm like, man, you ain't paying anything. I owe you for all the years what you gave. Be happy to do it. So, well, you know, put some matches together for him. We become friends from that. Mm. So, of course, the pestering starts, you know. I want to get into the business. And Nikolai's like, ah, no, you, you have a good job. Everybody gets hurt. Don't do that. But after a while, I wore him down. And then he was like, you be my manager. We were actually working a Czech Slovak festival. And we were the two youngest guys there. It was just for insurance purposes, basically. Everybody was in their 60s, their 70s. So we're walking around that day. We come up with the idea how it was going to be. Now, I love Chief J. Strong, though. So it was like, Nikolai, I want to be Indian. He's like, you goof. You could be Indian. I'm Russian. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So then we come up with this Nikita Brezhnikov, you know, thing. So it's, it's like, hey, up the Indian. <laughs> what? I would have loved it. I've got everything. I've got the headdress, the moccasins, all of it. But he said, oh no, God. no, put that aside. We, you know, I love Chief. I really did. So it worked out. It was beautiful over the years. Uh, being with Nikolai, look, he was another guy, complete opposite of what he portrayed. Mm. This is the guy who gave you the shirt off his back, his pants, everything. Just uh, he was that kind of a, a wonderful person because when he retired, he became a housing inspector for Baltimore County. It, it was uh, the bullshit high grass and weeds. He'd go out, you know, do that thing, see uh, people cut their grass because somebody's always complaining, you know. So he said one time he goes out there, it's an old lady in her 80s, and she's 
tears coming down her face. She said, sir, I, I can't cut the grass. I don't have anybody to help me. He said, I could not give her no bullshit. Fine. I go after work. I cut the grass for her. I said, good for you, Nikolai. Beautiful. I would expect no less of you. And that's the kind of guy he was. When you, when you got into the biz, right? So, you know, you're a detective by day, pro wrestler by night. Right. This sounds like a show. It does sound like a show. Go sounds on. like a, a, a bad uh, 70s. A, a bad what, like Canon or something? So what are you like, getting at? Oh, so sorry, Nikita. Detective on. Unlock. Would you please? I'm sorry, Nikita. <laughs> this is just <laughs> that okay. story. No, I, you, I, I can't. Here's a question I, I have for you, right? So, you know, you grew up a wrestling fan. You, I don't want to call you a Mark, right? Cause we're, what? We're all Marks. I'm a Mark. We're, Go we're, on. We're all business, Marks. Right? Are you a Mark, Nikita? But when you finally get behind the curtain, are you let down? Wow, good question. No, no, absolutely not. Okay. And I tell you, before before that happened, I had run into somebody that was selling pictures at the Baltimore Civic Center in 1978, and I mean, we knew what was going on. My mother bugged me from day one. You know, are you watching that phony stuff? It's like, mom, just you know, let me watch it. I'm not going to tell you, Marcus Welby's not a doctor tonight. Just leave me alone. Let me watch it. So we <laughs> knew. Put all this pressure. Going. There. Let me watch the show. <laughs> go exactly. on. You know, go go aggravate my father. Yeah. Like, you know, so it was like <laughs> this guy that was selling pictures. I become friends with him. That he start, starts feeding me information. Of what the first thing was, Peter Maivia's heel turn, and it's like ah, this can't. Be. Hey, this guy is like Mister Happy Go Lucky. It happens, and then it's like holy shit, I can't believe it. So yeah, you kind of knew when you got that information I loved it more it had a different mystique to it it was even better if you will so you know when I did get into the business I never met an ass nobody they were all wonderful to mm. me always were there for me because wrestling was my catharsis my father was a bastard alcoholic beat mm. the shit out of me called me all kind of shit names it was hell at home Oy. but wrestling that's what was there for me, and that's what saved me, wow. probably kept me from doing nice. who knows what, it, nice. you know, yeah. in a bad way. But when I got in there, they were even better to me. And, hey, people, uh, you know, sometimes don't want you to come into that kind of world. They could hurt you, just let you, like, maybe uh, figure out shit for yourself. They were great, man. Everybody was just wonderful. You said you said earlier, Nikita, that you were obviously, uh, you stated earlier that you're a big fan of Chief J Strongbow. Now, I just got to ask you, coming from our end, we also grew up watching Chief J, and I remember how popular he was and root for him, et cetera, et cetera. We've heard over the years that he was pretty hard on some of the guys. Did you see any of that? Or, or like, you know, did you have any opinion on Chief J behind the scenes, the way he would handle some of the wrestlers? No, because I didn't know him at that time. Okay. I got to know him when he was retired. Okay. But talking to people like a Nikolai, Johnny Valiant, people that uh, were more, and even like, okay, uh, let's go back a little bit. Iron Sheik. Before I had met Chief, uh, you know, I was managing Sheik sometimes with Nikolai, and I said, Sheik, I, you know, I really want to meet Chief. And you're down there in Georgia with him. He said, oh, no, no. I, I lost favor in Chief's eyes. He didn't let, let, like me. They do the gimmick stuff. So, no, no, uh, I, I won't introduce you. Chief not friend with me no more. He <laughs> He's not like that. So people know Chief was a – he had his own way. Because Nikolai even said, man, if Chief is your friend, that's unusual because he <laughs> that's doesn't un like a lot of people. Unusual. He He's just okay. got his own tunnel vision, and that's the way it was. So okay. I, I, you know, I don't – say you know whatever people talk about that it's this or that he was his own guy without a doubt if you made him laugh man that was unbelievable nikita um what was your role in the wrestler we're big fans of the wrestler uh, oh, yeah. as you may know evan ginsburg we call the uh secret gem of professional wrestling his involvement in the wrestler what was your involvement in the wrestler well, it was wild. Now, I was not on screen. I was never in the movie itself. It was behind the scenes. Evan, who I've known for over 30 years, he calls me one day. He says, uh, hey, Darren Aronofsky wants to meet. He wants to talk about wrestling. He wants to, he wants to meet wrestlers. So I'm like, all right, like good. Where are we hey, going to be? Nikita, could like, you uh, do that impression again? That was pretty good. Uh, listen, I used to drive Nikolai crazy. I call him and say, Nikolai, it's Evan. What's going on? What's going on? And he like, oh, uh, Evan, what's up? You know? And I rug out on him. Yeah, <laughs> I love him. He's a great friend. So anyway, 
Evan calls us. We okay. go out to meet Aronofsky and Scott Franklin, the other producer, and uh, with Evan and Johnny Valiant. We were at the transit station in New York City. It was a snowstorm. Oh, yeah. It was on the horizon. Mm. So it's like, man, Nikolai's like, are you crazy? We should go out there. A big blizzard coming. I said, Nikolai, it's friggin' Hollywood. We got to go, man. So we go out there. We meet, and you can tell people have an air about them. Maronofsky, he wasn't uh, belligerent or anything like that, but you could tell this guy, he carries some weight with him. So he had his shit together, as we would say in New York, you know? Yeah. So it's like, good. We go out there. Because he's like, oh, guys, what is this thing called wrestling? Because I really don't know anything about it. So, boom, you know, we lay out the groundwork for him. I worked with the first writer they had for a, a while and, uh, you know, giving him insights, things like that. So that was my involvement. Now, we were supposed to be in it, but then it was like, you know what? We don't want to have wrestler, 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 actor. He figured maybe that would kill it. So it was mm. like, eh, you know what? You, you're the boss, whatever you say. Did you make some decent money on that thing? Oh, nobody ever makes decent money. You know that. <laughs> yeah. IRS may be listening. <laughs> oh, my God. Or, you know, K, uh, KGB, I always play the gimmick. So it's like, no, no, we don't talk that stuff on the television. Yeah, so so also, let me get this straight just to uh, go over a little brief snippet you put in during that story. Uh, Nikolai Volkov, the Russian, didn't want to go out in the snow. <laughs> just want to make sure I got that part. That's what you got out of that. There's a blizzard. It That's is, what I told you. Yeah, he he's supposed to be the Russian. He didn't want to go out of the snow. the story was fine. He didn't want to go out of the snowstorm. He's the Russian guy. I give up. Do you understand my point, Nikolai? Oi. Nikolai, it's Nikita. It's Nikita. Yeah, Nikolai, Nikita. I am out of control. Nikita. What'd you put in this coffee? We're going to take a quick commercial break, and I'm going to ask you to join us in the most annoying wrestler expert segment. Hi, Hawk. <laughs> All right, the idea behind the most annoying wrestling expert is everybody's a wrestling expert who loves wrestling. And we like to read comments and then discuss it. And we're asking for yourself, Nikita, uh, Mr. Miller, super producer. And <laughs> So I do oh, yeah. the names so people don't know. Oh, yeah, you covered that. Go on. Uh, All right, I'm going to read it, and you guys reply. This one's a little long, but uh, and then the next you one's kind of short. You want me to read it? All right, go on. Are you ready? Good luck, Nikita. Okay, so let's right. talk about pro wrestling. <laughs> we're not curing cancer here. What? We're not changing the world. In fact, we're not doing anything of any significance. Mm. We are, however, all united in a community as a group for a product that we all agree and we love. Pro wrestling was created on escapes escapism, escapism, the, whatever. Thank you. <laughs> at the time, in this country, <laughs> we were riddled with war. People Ooh. needed something to take their minds off the war and the sadness that occupied their lives. So enter pro wrestling. Okay. But as Bob Dylan said, times they are changing. Okay. And so goes the world of professional wrestling. Little did our wrestling forefathers realize that oh, yeah. at the time that they could have created a new new n- created for us a quagmire. When once wrestling united us in fervent sol- solidarity, pro wrestling is now a device, the divisive as po- politics, racism, government interference, invasion of privacy, and you name it. Pro wrestling has become a new politic. To quote Harvey Feinstein. Can't we all just get along, at least for a little bit? I'll cut it off there. So, guys, you want to wait? Uh, uh, I put everybody to sleep. Miller! What? You know, now, I already know that? about that. That's my buddy, Angela. I already <laughs> know that. No, we're so we were just protecting the innocent. The detective turned him in. What do you, do you, you believe this? Well, because he told me to say hi and make oh sure you guys God, knew yeah, that hi, he, hi. he, he loved Angela without a doubt. Good friend and he's a but, good hey, friend. it makes good sense, right? And I get where he's coming from. You know, today, you need... A catharsis, and I guess wrestling is it now, like it was for us back then. Mm. But you know, it's sometimes the things that they do, and I think that situate that uh, comment it went a little bit further with a couple of things people were talking about. The guy that uh, 
gets in the ring and uh, playing with himself and stuff like that. That's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Ah, Not a fan, Wait. huh? <laughs> uh, well, us, but I get, my, us neither. I my point. Us neither. I don't think, do you really think times have changed? Yeah. What? what? Of course they've yeah. changed. Of course they've changed. Yeah. Why? Well, look at everything in general. There was one key We're sentence. We're talking about this specific By, by, the, by the way, wrestling. yes, let's do that, because there was one key sentence while I was snoring there that I thought was an awesome sentence by Angelo, and while it was... While snoring. What? Yeah, while I was snoring. But, but no, I thought there was one really good point, that like wrestling's just like everything else now. We make a big deal out of everything. Well, because now everybody's got you some know? kind So of I agree with him on that. Rock on. Good job, Angelo. What was... Everybody's got a big, giant platform to jump on now, right? They didn't have that. Right. Social media. Right. right. What do you and that's part of the Social problem. What, how do you draw heat today? Every everybody's offended by every friggin' thing you say. So it's like, right. okay, so how do you come out and get heat? Right. Yeah, you know, you, you probably have lawyers sue you. You have people picketing and want to burn down your building. But it drew by the things people said on the promos, and they would pay the fans would pay money to see that son of a bitch get his ass kicked that night. Right. But you can't do it anymore. So right. Right. how do you draw heat? Yeah, but these are these are regular people trying to draw heat, aren't they? They just want to be Facebook fucked. Basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. No. Hey, look, I, I you totally know, agree. If, if I make the most innocent post, just a picture of of, of, a, of a match of the past, I, I see people arguing and fighting about stuff. It's like, what the hell's wrong with you? Sit back, relax, and enjoy it. They, already, it's also man. it's technology and computer balls. Nikita, I recently put a picture of the Three Stooges up, and somehow it turned into an "I hate Vince McMahon" rant. So I totally understand what you're saying. I just was like, I hate the Three Stooges. Right. At no, least, no, you, no, but at least you kept it to the Three Stooges. I saw. Yeah, but you kept it to the Three Stooges, and what the, the hell do you know anyway? Terrible. What do you know anyway? I don't, I don't like that comment. <laughs> Go on. I don't know, man. All all I all I say is this is. is I think everybody just takes it a little too serious. Yeah. Well, and again, yeah. if you want to get angry over politics, I get it. If you want to get angry over racism, I get it. The one thing anyone should not get angry <laughs> is over wrestling. Is professional Oy. wrestling. Enjoy it. Right. That's what it's meant to be. Entertainment. Right. That's it's right. entertainment. All right, here's my other rant. Are you ready? Oi. You want me to read this one? Go ahead. Uh, if I can see it, I will. Huh. And the, in quotations, fool and his money are soon parted award goes to the rent these guys must save living in mom's basement has to be enormous or else wrestling fans are suddenly rich. <laughs> Shaking my head. SummerSlam package holder championship packages starting at $2,950. Platinum packages at $1,540. Gold packages at $1,275. Silver packages at $1,085. Your thoughts, Nakita? I'm not going to mention the name, but I think I know who it may be. I think I may know, but I'm not going to say anything. Protect the innocent, sir. Okay, silence. So, (laughs) you know what? One of the things that actually morphed into that at one point was like, okay, may I get this book out now uh, called When It Was Real? Hmm. Somebody else mentioned it's like, you know what? People won't help support each other in this business but yet they go spend all this money on on, uh, like wwe you know for their pay-per-views but yet they won't go to their local house show they won't buy the merchandise it's like look how do you get people to change their ways sometimes they just follow the crowd and that's they fall into a bad way with that sometimes because where do we all go with we got our money we're going to spend it the way we want but you want to get people to support the indies because that's closer. When you start to talk about the big enterprise and the big guy up on the hill that it makes the big money like Vince McMahon and things like that, I don't know. I don't care. To me, go be happy. It, it comes right back to what we were saying. Don't let wrestling get between and cause a division. Go enjoy it. If you want to spend your money on WWE, that's good. Go do that. Or if you want to go see the local indie show like I'm going to do this weekend, that's good, too. So right. take it what you want. Right. Right. Your money. Right. Whatever you want. Yeah, to I totally. Money. I think his opinion. Even if it's mom and dad's money, whatever. Go enjoy <laughs> it. <laughs> I wish I lived the mom and dad's money. I never got, too. I never got, too. I never got dad's money to go to wrestling. You never did? Never. Hell no. Mm-hmm. No, my dad was rough, man. That way, no way. Pornhub or an indie show? What? 
Did you catch that one? Oh my God! What do you? Pornhub or an indie show? <coughs> wow! What's on Pornhub that night? There's a lot. Is there? Oh, very interesting. You could look up "angry wrestling fan has sex" and you could watch. On Pornhub. On Pornhub. Oh my God! Sorry Just about that, uh, Nikita. All right, Nikita. All right. Tell us about yes. your book, my friend. Yes. Okay. Hey, quick look. Here it is. When it was real, and what that? It's not about me as far as my wrestling career or anything like that. It's me as, as a fan. What wrestling meant to us, it's not, you're not going to go into it and say, look, 1970, it's not a day-by-day breakdown uh, with results. It's a narrative of each event that occurred through those years from 1970 to 1979 because it did affect us. It meant a lot. Like when Spiro Sarian turned on Bruno San Martino, mm-hmm. back to Evan Ginsberg, his father was a cab driver, he said the cabbies all parked their cabs. They went into Madison Square Garden that night to watch what was going to happen. Mm. That's what this book talks about, nice. what it meant to people at that time. You can't make people believe they either did or they didn't, and right. they did believe back then. Right. And that's what I put forth. Plus, all, a real neat thing, Scott Teal, who was the, uh, uh, the co-editor, he edited it, and uh, what Scott did, he put in a lot of these, uh, if you could see it, the clippings that were in the newspaper. Free advertisement back then. But that's all they needed. Just a little blurb in the newspaper, and that would sell, plus the one hour on television. It's actually a piece of history of the 70s. I didn't know that Scott Teal was going to do it. He's a wonderful guy, by the way. Honest guy. He's one of the only people on the planet I would trust with my wallet. And people that know me say, oh my God, because I'm not tight, but I learned I learned from the old timers, yeah. hey, it's not how much you make, it's how much you save, and nobody's giving you any extra, so boom. But yeah, it's a real nice book about that time. You can put politics aside, you can put the old lady aside, squawking in your ear or whatever, your boss at work, and just sit back and read and enjoy. And you know what? For the kids that say, well, who the hell cares about the 70s, you can learn how the guys got over back then without the internet, without cable. Where can you get the book, Nikita? Uh, Scott Teal site. It's called crowbarpress.com, C-R-O-W-B-A-R, and the Kindle version is on Amazon. Nice. So let me ask you, uh, you said you really don't watch wrestling or the, the WWE nowadays. Do you feel like you might be missing something at some point? So we were a couple weeks ago when Edge made his return to the Royal Rumble. We were discussing again how electric that event was at that that second it rivaled anything I'd have ever seen watching wrestling in my entire life Edge being a hero of a particular generation like the Ruthless Aggression kids who grew up watching it well yeah because back in the 98-99 period with McMahon and Stone Cold I was watching that I enjoyed it a lot so Edge is a great guy by the way way he's just a wonderful person so i'm happy for him that's great i peek in once in a while i see just about everything on the net when people are bitching about it talking about it, whatever so i i guess in a way i do know what's going on Mm. but see for me i got this extensive library of the classics so it's hard for me to say i'm going to put that aside tonight and go watch what they're doing today probably good idea to be informed but Hey, I'm an old school guy, so you're not going to pull me away. It's like uh, you're being married to somebody for a long time. Hey, you may see what what else is going on out there, but you're not going to stray away from old faithful. Gotcha. Your opinion on Vince McMahon before we let you go tonight? I love the guy. I I swear. Interesting. I said it. I said it to him personally. Out of all the people, if I'm in a coma, I'll recognize your voice because. Hey, when we were watching wrestling, this guy eats, sleeps, and shits rest. Thank wrestling. you. He's the biggest. Can I, can, thank you. Go on. Oh, my God. He knows. Just... He's smart. Hey, look, do I agree with everything he did? Sounds like me. No, but it, you know what? It had to change. Our people were getting older, all our heroes and villains. Things were going to change. Yeah. I, I think Vince is a genius. There you go. There you go. One uh, last question before we cut you out. Your favorite, or what do you think was the greatest match ever in the history of wrestling? Whoa. Really now? 
Now, for me, it was a tag team match in Madison Square Garden, October 24th, 1977. Chief J. Strongbow, Chief Peter Maivia against Professor Tanaka and Mr. Fuji. I loved it. it it's just two out of three fall classic. Oh, two it really out of three. Is. Building was red hot that night or what? Yes, without a go. doubt. There you go. Nikita, for the fans, one more time, where can they get your book? And the name of your book, please. The name of the book is When It Was Real. There's a picture with Bob Backlund against Greg Valentine, February 19, 1979, in the Garden. Nice. ProbarPress.com, and it's on Amazon with the Kindle version. And you can find me on Facebook. That's probably the best place to catch me. Nikita, it's been our honor to have you on the show, and we thank you for taking your time with us today. Thank you, guys. Great show, and I do listen in. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thanks, Nikita. Dust for done. <laughs> The great Nikita. Yeah, that was cool, man. That was pretty cool, right? Yeah, that was. It was yeah. him. Why does he remind me of the, the distinguished uh, Gary Michael Capetta approach? Mm-hmm. Was that just me? Kind of liked it. You know what I think? I He's think very. When I when I listen to him, I see a guy our age. Okay. Maybe a little older, maybe oh. a little younger. I All right, know. fine. Um, but he's got. He's, he's, he's got himself departmentalized, right? Yeah. He's not yeah. over thought on everything. Right. He's pretty much. Sounds grounded to me. Sounds grounded grounded to me. It's not out of control. You think he understands why people like certain things, don't like certain things. Yeah. How about that opinion on Vince? Wow. And I'll tell you what. Uh I'm going to buy his book now. There you go. Well, that takes care of that. I like to read. There you go. All right. We're going to go to a quick commercial break. All right, guys, I want you guys to weigh in on this news recently. Uh, Val Venus on Nyla Rose. Oh, boy. Miller, if you don't remember. Uh, Nyla Rose is a transgender wrestler. Hello. Who recently <laughs> won the Hello. AEW women's title. Yes. Val Venus, who we had in the studio. Yes. Which was pretty cool. We, we produced I wasn't show. here for that one. Okay. No, no. Uh, uh, pretty cool guy. Yeah. Was yeah. he a good guy? Yeah. Yeah. So the big Val cool. Voski tweeted... Uh, out a little booking suggestion for All Elite Wrestling. The former WWE superstar stated that Rose should be booked as a heel, which she is. He went on to say that the company shouldn't use their plat- platform to push stupid, insane narrative of social justice warriors. There's a little more, and then I want you guys to weigh in. Cody Rhodes, who is the, I guess the, we'll call him the chief operating officer, is that fair to say? Right. Uh, Cody Rhodes responded to the comments... It's just disappointing. If you're somebody that grew up liking Val Venus, he's kind of like the disco infernal of the WWE. As I don't think anyone really knows who Val Venus is anymore, but it's disappointing. So, nice little shot from our friend Cody. Mm -hmm. I don't think he actually means terrible things he put in writing. I think he's just trying to get a booking. (laughs) We're not booking Val Venus. I'm going to move on. Val's response is pretty simple. I work at a dispensary now and serve humankind with the very best medicine God put on this planet. But make no mistake about it, Cody's delusion has earned and deserved fact-based response. I do not want to work for AEW. Stay tuned, humanoids. Mm. Thoughts, gentlemen? Hmm. Interesting. Um... Well, one of the key uh, statements that caused all of this that you didn't say that I find very, very to the point was Val Venus uh, basically saying that Nyla Rose is portraying a biological man winning the women's championship. Uh, Basically, he's trying to say once upon a time somebody was born as a man and has changed and now all of a sudden uh, they are the women's champion. Obviously, on a nature-based basis, Val Venus has the right to believe that this is a load of scientific shit. I have no issue with that. Even a scientist will tell you this is a load of scientific shit. Um, as far as Cody Rose, let me break it to well, Cody on, Rose. I want to stop you there. Yeah, go on. Play devil's advocate. No, go ahead. Play devil's advocate. I will. Aren't people born a male? Yeah. But they're really inside a female? Oh, would you stop with your chromosomes? Look, the bottom line is, is, is that you pee standing up. Okay. okay. All right. Now they could be standing up if they wanted to, but I guess you're missing my point. No, my point is 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 that he's he's stating a scientific fact here. That's my point. 
And uh, Wait, you know, I want to I want to step back. What? This is, I'm being 100 percent serious. Here. What's going to happen oh. when when the Nyla Rose bumps the woman out of the job in the warehouse because Nyla Rose can lift heavier Not, boxes? I wanna, is the woman going to be I upset? Get, Probably. I don't want to anyway. get into that. <laughs> we'll get into that. But my point to you is this. Yeah. Do you feel? Yeah. That. Being homosexual or being feeling to be transgender is a natural thing, or do you think it's a learned behavior? Uh, if you're asking me if I believe That's in that genetic nonsense, I believe we all make choices. That's what I think. So you think this is choice driven? I think, of course, it's a choice. Wait a minute, what does that mean? All of a sudden, when you decide to change a part on you, it's not a reflex; it's a decision. Miller, am I missing something? Um, well, homosexuals. A ho- person who's homosexual It's a has, choice That's not a choice Being a homosexual It's not You're born with a sexual preference Okay Now transgender. Either way I don't care by the way Transgenderism Would seem to me to be a choice You choose Wait a minute To switch gender Is what I I'm think saying. we choose to do okay. whatever we right, do so, No 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 I I'm think confused it's, no, I, Listen there is a, 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 a one, This is a very good conversation Oh, yeah. This is confusing I want to make Yes you are correct, yeah. theoretically. Okay. You're making a choice. I think but so. But do you think it's nature over nurture, meaning that... How about it's a combination of both? You have, obviously, physical impulses that come naturally from your genetic DNA inheritance, and then you act upon it. But that's your choice to act upon it. Look, like, like you know, hey, I, I'd like to be 25 and run out and get a bunch of blow right now, but I ain't going to do it. No, but no, no. no. Can, can I, I like jump to. in? Yes, please. <laughs> heterosexuality, <laughs> homosexuality is a primal urge. Yeah. That's not a choice. You can't, if a guy walks, the best looking guy in the world walks by me right now, it doesn't matter to me. Right. If the best Understood. looking girl walks by, I go, oh, you know, that's a primal oh, okay. urge. Okay. Transgenderism, I believe to an extent, is a choice. But do you feel that a person could feel so much like a man or feel so much like a woman? They have to get out of the body that they're in. Look, they I understand. Out of place. I understand I all of that. that. I believe that. I, do I, I, if that's what they need to do, fine. That. Whatever, man. The bottom line is, is, yeah. is that he said that she was portraying a biological man winning the women's championship, and I'm like, you know, what are you going to do? Hang the man for his opinion? Because that's exactly what Cody Rhodes and the rest of them are going to do. Oh, you're so oh, disappointing. Yes. Oh, yes. oh no, I, I think nobody remembers who Val Venus is. You know what? I was talking to you earlier about it since you wanted to make a wrestling shot at Val Venus and try to fuck his career up over his own personal right to have an opinion. Stardust was shit on a shingle compared to Val Venus. How about them apples? Sure. How about them fucking apples? Fair enough. Okay? Since you want to take money out of Val Venus's fucking wallet because he's got the fucking right to have an opinion. Here's the problem. We all have the right to have an opinion. But when you start crucifying and you you're going to take away someone's job? Are you going to run them out of town? Are you going to throw shit at their car? You ain't a liberal. You ain't a socialist. You're an asshole. Next. Miller. I'm with Farrow. What the, no. f- what the no, frick? Farrow's, no, I agree. You know? With and they do have a right I, to their I, opinion. I, I I'm think, not going to act that way towards I, them, I but I know think, it's coming my way. I think you Fuck should, that. I think you should have a right to your opinion Yeah. without being crucified. Yeah. I think Cody Rhodes... Has a right to his opinion. That's right, without but, being crucified for it. But, but to degrade Val Venus's career is wrong. What the, the what the frig? I agree. As the owner of a business, which by the way, isn't employing Val Venus. Correct. That's awfully presumptive and douchey to say. I never hire you. Well, I didn't ask you to. Right. So you could just say I disagree with I Val disagree Venus's with what Val views. Venus is saying. I find it to be. Prehistoric, if right. that's yeah. the right it, word. Whatever, but right. and out of line. And but don't say that the guy's I, trying to get a job. I'll never because there's other ways to get a job, like to apply for it. Right. Or like to go to him and say, I want a job. And by the way, with all due respect, like you mentioned, Stardust, to minimize Val Venus's career oh, in the please. WWE please. is unrealistic oh, and unfair. Please. Especially a for a guy shit. who walked in on Daddy's coattail. Well, well, oh, stop. Good. Thank Holla. you. Thank you. Word, I go down the street and I oh, go, my hey, God. you know who Val Venus is? I would say five out of ten people would know. Because not everybody's a wrestler. Ladies. If I go to, do you know who Cody Rhodes is? I guarantee you're lucky if you get one person that knows who that is. Right. I mean, let's be realistic. Hey, you Start know what? We got we got a right to because we actually hung with Val Venus. He's a good guy, man. He's not looking to take was anybody's. Was he a good dude? I thought, I thought he was cool, man. Yeah. I thought he was Very fine, man. He was totally and he cool. And hated Romano, so that was. <laughs> was hilarious. Oh my god! He hated he had a pain Romano in his. Boy, never mind. I, I, oh I said to god. Romano's my friend, don't do that. But he's like, I hate that. You know, he's going to go live tonight. You know, it's Monty and the Farrell guys. No, no, I try to protect Romano. What's up, Val? 
Dan Val Trump, just hates you me. try to put. Yes. Oh God, are you hear this? All I could to stop. Val all you this. could. I remember. Yeah, you, you threw remember? yourself in front of the truck and everything. I did. That Don't was, do was that crazy. to Dan. He's like, I got him. I got him. I yeah, he was like driven, it. man. It was like a Nyla Rose thing. It was Val was just on fire. That all right, night. so real quick, AEW uh, beat out NXT this week in viewership, right? Uh, 893,000 viewers topping NXT at 794. Okay. Um, Can I ask you a question? Go ahead. Why do people get so revved up about that? I have no idea. Right, because I think it goes back It's to very minimal in this case. It's like war, whatever. Right? There's got to This be, is yeah, not a right. war. Right. I will tell you this. This is not, not WCW, I'm, WWE. I'm not an NXT it's guy, not. What? But I watched the show yesterday. Yeah. yeah. It was very good. Was cool. It? No, I mean, I'm sorry. Did I say NXT guy? I'm sorry. I'm not an AEW guy. Right. I watched the show. Right. It was very good. Cool. Really? Good. Yes. Okay. NXT, week after week, though, if you're pure wrestling... See, that's what I'm saying. For all these wrestling experts that love pure wrestling... Right. NXT's your answer. Absolutely. Because these guys put on nothing but clinics every and they, week. And they keep I'm the, not that guy, dude. I need Mike. I need bullshit. I don't want right. to watch some other dudes. And, right? you won't find any, and you won't find any Dark Orders or uh, Orange Cassidy's in NXT. Right. They're not playing that game. That's wrestling. I agree. You know, so I really don't get where the problem is. Plus, it's a WWE product, NXT, so wake up. Whatever, man, man, I got to tell you, I really did enjoy the last conversation, though. It was very... Oh, yeah, that was extremely uncomfortable uh, for me. We've got frick? about two minutes. I want to <laughs> read something that I read. I want you guys to weigh on this. Kevin Nash and Scott Hall's defection to the WCW from WWE in 1996 shook the wrestling world. On his appearance on After the Bell podcast with Corey Graves, Graves asked Nash... What would have happened if Nash stayed in the WWE and not left to WCW? Nash says that if he would not have dropped the WWE Championship to Bret Hart, which he did in the Survivor Series, so he said he still would have kept it. And then Nash has previously talked about how the WWE title run could have lasted three years rather than 350 days. Nash reiterated that point saying that losing the heart would have led to him defeating The Undertaker and ending the streak much earlier. Mm. Thoughts? I'm kind of glad it happened the way it did because I don't think I could have endured a three-year run with Diesel as champion. First of all, I call bullshit. Could be. Uh, I don't know. Kevin Nash, look, with all due respect, is known to have the worst championship run when I mean from making money for the company. Yeah. What well, was a they bad they year never, in general yeah, for wrestling? They never had lower revenues. 95 was a bad year, year for wrestling. Nash's champion. Yeah, it was bad. It was bad. Okay. It was and bad then year. on the other hand, to sit there and tell me, tell me that you would have beaten The Undertaker, right. I think at that point The Undertaker was the streak was already in motion and everybody was thinking about it at that point. I don't remember thinking about it yet. The streak became more and more apparent getting towards the 20s and as far as the re- count in WrestleMania, is that, you know, from what I remember. But uh, I don't see a three-year run for Nash being good for the WWE back then. Thank God it didn't happen that way. We wound up getting what we got, which was much better. Listen, there's, there's three champions that will be recognized for probably having their worst ten years in professional wrestling. Oh. The WWE. Forget about the NWA. Well, right, we know about Nash. Uh, 95 was a terrible year for wrestling in general, right. but go on. I'm going to go on the record and say Shawn Michaels had one of the worst championships. He was runs. coming off the heels okay. of it. Yeah. Okay, not, that's not a knock on Shawn Michaels. The Timing. Fact is facts. It's it was about money. Business wasn't great And then. I'll give the Monday Night Messiah probably <laughs> is on that list. <laughs> Seth Rollins getting murdered. To tell you the truth... In recent years, and I did look this up, you'd be proud of me. The biggest decline, the biggest decline, was when Jinder had the belt. Boy, did they sink during that time period. They lost a million viewers. No, I hated it. They said Nakamura. Come on, it was awful. Give it a belt to Nakamura. That was terrible. They lost a million viewers a week on Raw by the time that six months was over. Well, I'm going I'm to I'm 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 say this. Jinder. The Monday Night Messiah. Yeah. has had the lowest Raw rating as champion in the history of Monday Night Raw. Right. Well, yeah. Now, if you want to blame it on him, I blame it on him. But you may not, right? The right. ratings are different. You, right. you could argue the point, but the facts are the facts. Huh. The lowest Raw ever wow. was Monday Night... Wow. Well, he wasn't the Monday Night Messiah. Right. All right? That was a little... And this is not right. a knock on Rollins. He's a great wrestler. Right. But guess what, guys? Some people just don't have... What, Miller? It. There you go. Not on that level, it. no. That's it. It. Yep. Kevin Nash seems like a dick. <laughs> no, no, I'm being honest. Every time I've seen him interviewed, every time I've seen him he's, on YouTube uh, interviews, whatever, he's, he's, he seems like an arrogant he's, dick. He's quite confident. If that's him, what you're sensing, he's uh, seven, quite confident. Seven point, you know, seven feet. I would be pretty confident. confident. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to go after a guy like me. 
Oh, oh my god! <laughs> Kung Fu Miller! Yeah, Here we go! Here we go. Right. Kung, Kung Fu Miller! Again, I want to thank our <laughs> special guest, Nikita, President of Call, for there coming you go. and phoning in, Skyping, Skyping in. That was good. Nice connection. I thought that was a great interview. Yeah, he was great awesome. Great production well. job, Mr. Miller, yeah. as always. Yeah. You know, you know, we thank the fans. I think I have to take just a few seconds to thank you, Mr. Miller, hmm. for the hard work you put on this show. Yeah. You have helped us make our success in a very short time. You didn't do it right? We've only been doing this together a year and a half. Right. Right? It's... And you have been a major contributor to what's thank going you. on. Thank you. And obviously, Village Connection Media is probably the top broadcasting okay. station not radio station I want to correct not you. podcast not, not pa- radio. podcasting this is a broadcasting station with many venues and owner Jim Savali works very diligently to make sure that this station is uh, top notch so again for for people who want to get out of the podcasting world you live in the New York area you should reach out to Mr. Jim Savali and see if there's any openings to put on the show anyway Again, Mr. Miller. Thank you very much, boys. Honor. My pleasure. Yes, sir. Monty DeFaro could see every Thursday from 8.05 to 9 p.m. out of Rockstar Studios in Huntington. Also, catch us on YouTube, Facebook, Spotify, Anchor, Breaker, Google Podcast, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Radio Public, and iHeartRadio. Catch us on cable in a reduced version, which the Faro is totally responsible. Him and his Oy. partner from Wisteria Hall, another great band, which you can get their music on all you know, Reverb Nation, uh, Apple Music, and anywhere where music is sold. I got to tell you, uh, Indivisible, the, the album is on my iPod. It's not because he's my partner. Oh, I yeah, download right. it because I, I love like it. the music. It's Thank awesome. You. Thank and you. every time we've played it, we've had wrestlers say, I yeah. it and downloaded it. We have. Um, they also cut the video for Cable, right? Yes. work behind all this. Oh, so, yeah. So uh, both Bart Griggs and Mr. Jimmy Farrow work very diligently on Sundays to get your cable viewing ready. Uh, you can catch us on Channel 115 at 8.30 to 9 p.m. on every Tuesday, and then you can catch us on Channel 115 from 6 a.m. to 6.30 on Saturdays. And soon they'll be cutting more video for Channel 20, which I keep promising, but it will be coming soon. Mm-hmm. Also catch us on Drive Time out of the new Fox affiliate RTF Sports Network from 5 to 6, Drive Time. And I think that's about it, Farrow. Excellent. Yeah, there is. Before we get out of here, just one last thing. To the audience at home, no one, after all these accolades have been given, no one on this show works harder behind the scenes to get stuff done than this guy right here. I appreciate it. My partner. You've been watching Monty and the Farrow. Until next week, later.